Hey everyone, welcome back to Do It Open That Door. You've joined us for another bonus episode. Dan, my esteemed colleague, what are we covering today? Today we're covering an album, actually, a metal album called Songs mm. of Unspeakable Terror by the band Bloody Hammers. Nico, who are these Bloody Hammers? So they're a husband and wife duo from Transylvania, North Carolina. Yes, that's a real place. No, we didn't believe it either. Yes, we looked it up before whoa, recording. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I believed it. I knew about that place. You Now, nah, fuck out of here. No, you didn't. <laughs> yes, I did. No, you fucking didn't. I need to know it for my job. Mm. Yeah, take that. <sighs> Anyway, so they're primarily a husband and wife duo. They've got some touring members, though. And on this particular record, they delve into a heavy punk sound with metal and horror influences. All right. All right. So before we uh, kind of get this ball rolling here, who is this album for? You know, like if you had to, because music, of course, is it's for the listener. So not everyone <laughs> is going to be able to listen to a record and say, oh, I really like it. If it's for this kind of person then they might like it or they might not like it. If you see what I'm saying. Maybe I'm over here speaking into the ether. But uh, Dan, who would you say this record's for? What kind of person? I think this is for metalheads, mm -hmm. horror heads, okay. fans of Black Sabbath. Uh, was a, it sounds like a heavy influence to me. I kind of heard a lot of that. Yeah, that kind of sound. Nico, is this one for, you know, fans of the Ramones and maybe other kind of punk bands? So, um, yeah, I, I would definitely say so. There's a lot of punk influence here that comes through pretty clearly, actually. They've got um, a, a really good, peppy, just tempo to almost all of the tracks, except for their acoustic one, which we can talk about in a second. But um, this record is, it's almost like something that you would hear on the end credits to Evil Dead or something. Mm. Mm. So I guess before we also get real deep into it here, just a general idea, you know, how after listening to the record, we've all listened to it multiple times. So how do you feel about it? I'll, I'll lead by saying, I think this album knows exactly what it wants to be. And it really doesn't stray too far from that. If you came for some, you know, punk metal infused riffs with some horror backing that's exactly what you're going to get on this record i don't think that they try and experiment too much which you know depending on who you are depending on what you like you might take that as a negative but otherwise you know sometimes you just you know you go to the drive through and you want what you want you don't want unspecial you want what you want and if this is what you want this is what you'll get but dan i'd be interested to hear your thoughts just generally. I actually quite enjoyed this album. I thought a lot of the riffs were pretty cool. The production was really great. The lyrical content, for the most part, was great as well. And I think it's kind of a, a lot of fun, actually. The one criticism that I really have, and we'll probably dive into this a little bit more, is I would just like more variety on the album. <laughs> I hear a laugh from a snide motherfucker named Nico. Reporting so Nico. for duty. Well, what's up? What's your general so, thoughts on the record? I, I I agree with Dan. I think it genuinely is a lot of fun. This is a band that is oozing charisma and charm. They nail the aesthetic that they are going for. It's pulpy. It's gothic. It's dark. But similar to Dan, and the band has done other styles of, or not styles, other like genres and different sort of like takes and stuff of music before, but this particular record is extremely consistent, which is a good thing in some ways, and um, I'm just going to say, every, almost every song has a... Like, almost every song. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead now and you know, let's let's start on the on a bright leg, a bright foot. We're going to go through and we're going to name our individual, you know, top tracks. And maybe if when you name, you know, name a track, you can talk maybe about one or two things that really endeared you to that track. So naturally, I'm going to have Dan lead first because he is, you know, the master and commander of this sort of thing. So, Dan, if you had to call out three top tracks for yourself, what would they be? So my first and foremost favorite track is Not of This Earth. 
I uh-huh. love that song. I love the energy with it. It starts with this really dope like sample from like a like Twilight Zone or radio kind of show. Um, right. That was really really cool. And being a fan of like underground hip hop, like MF Doom kind of stuff, that like samples that kind of stuff occasionally. I really thought that was cool. The vocal production on that one in particular, I really liked. And then uh, sort of like the the chorus is like a halftime kind of feel to it. And then like it jumps back into like the, you know, regular time. And I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. So I love that song. My second favorite, I think, is We Are the Damned. Uh, I loved the energy on that one. There's gang vocals and there's sort of like a hook uh, that's chanted with like gang vocals where they say We Are the Damned. It was really cool. And then my third favorite, I think, would be The Brain That Wouldn't Die. Damn you. Uh-huh. <laughs> that one, I don't have a particular couple reasons. More so, I just thought it was a great song. And, and kind of like I said with the other ones, just full of energy. And it was just a lot of fun to listen to. Oh, man, Dan, I, I sincerely hate you, bro. Did I take all of yours? I sincerely hate you. Very close. Very, very, very close. Well, I'm glad I so, went first. So my favorite three on this record are going to be, well, first off, Dave, let me ask, of the three, do you have like a favorite favorite, like your top, top, top pick of the record? Not of this earth. All right. So my favorites, I'm going to lead with not of this earth for a lot of the same reasons that Dan just talked about. In addition to that, though, I will say this song was a, it's a change of pace, kind of from the rest of the record in certain respects, because this is the only one that really leads with the vocal sample like that. And I have in my notes here, you know, dope sample intro, and then the fucking guitar comes in and rips your asshole open. Oh, and why? while that oh, might wow. be somewhat explicit, that's so how are I the felt. lyrics. That's how I felt. Like it's it's a cool track. I really I really dig it. And you know, my next favorite track is going to be a night to dismember. That's the you know the first track we hear. I I got to give it props because this is to me, the best hook on this entire record is on A Night to Dismember. It's super catchy. The It sets the tone for the record very well as well. It does. It's very high energy, and it immediately is like, hey, you wanted to know what you're getting for this record? This is what you're getting for this record. It's, so, a, it's a great first track, too. Yeah. It absolutely is. It's pretty high octane. It, it is. And, you know, a lot of the lyrics, they don't necessarily correspond to like any horror movies in particular although when you look at the kind of the album art for this it's almost like a drive-through cinema type thing at least the album art i saw and this one almost kind of reminded me a little bit of kind of a halloween vibe where this guy's breaking out and he's gonna go chop some people up or whatever so i liked it i thought i thought that was pretty cool my last you know favorite is going to be the brain that wouldn't die. Oh my God, did I love this? Did I love this one? Uh, there's just so much energy behind this track, as well as the lyrics. Lyri- so I am, you know, beh- behind the curtain. I'm a lyricist. You know, if I'm if I'm in a band, I'm typically, you know, doing lyrical stuff. I, you know, all that stuff. I'm big on lyrics. So I really, really, really dug the lyrics behind the brain that wouldn't die. This guy's literally out with his girlfriend, and her head flies off. She dies, but the brain wouldn't die. So he's out here looking for someone to put her brain in. And it's pretty funny. I like it as well as, as well as I really, really, really dig the, uh, the kind of the main or recurring riff in this song. I, I just thought it was fucking great. It's kind of a, you know, touching love song. So I liked it. And the brain that wouldn't die, as you might guess, is my pick for this album. So Nico, how about you? What are your three favorites? So my three favorite tracks are up first, uh, Not of This Earth. I'm not going to retread any other ground there, but the song fucking whips. My second track of note is I Spit on Your Corpse, which I, I, I feel like Lucifer's Light probably should have ended the album, but I don't know. Lucifer's Light is their acoustic track um, that goes on prior to I Spit on Your Corpse. And I Spit on Your Corpse, I really enjoy it for sort of the same reason that you enjoy the brain that wouldn't die like it's oddly genuine the chorus goes i can't wait any goddamn longer i spit on your corpse like fuck what why were you waiting was there something going on did you have an errand that you were dealing with 
So because this is the closing track on the album, Nico, do you think that makes the track better or worse? Or do you think that makes the album better or worse? I I don't know. I, I think it does make sense to bookend the album with two, um, you know, songs that are representative of the, the sound in general. I, I just think that the placement of Lucifer's light just being so different, I think that would have had much more impact if it was the last song. So it's funny that you say that. I was actually reading a quick interview with the vocalist slash drummer slash guitarist uh, and probably more, Anders Manga, I guess is how you say his name. But he was saying that in retrospect, he probably would have put Lucifer's light a little bit earlier. In, Interesting. In the record, just because he's, he, he felt that maybe by putting it at the end, not enough people would really get to listen to it. Mm. So he would have maybe moved it a little bit earlier. Um, into the and end. that's fair. There is a lot that goes into like track orders and shit. I actually also kind of think that the album might have benefited more if Lucifer's Light was a little bit earlier on. It also would have done a good thing about like breaking up some of the sameness that we might talk about a little bit later. But you have um, one more, Nico. Oh, right. No, my my third favorite track is going to be Night of the Witch, just for that mm. big time sort of Black Sabbath Metallica opening. It's it's just it has a ton of presence and it it sounds very distinct because of that. And okay. I like that. So if you had to pick one, what's your pick for the record? Um, I'm sorry. I can't, no, I mean, it's both, really. Honestly, I, I think I gotta say Not Of This Earth. It's just so fun. All right, so we've got two shouts for Not Of This Earth, one for The Brain That Wouldn't Die. But yeah, those are those are our favorites. Now, let me ask you guys this real quick. Some albums, you know, you benefit from by listening to them as an album, you know, straight through. You get more than if you just listen to it, you know, kind of single by single. Would you say this is basically something that's better altogether? Or do you think you can listen to it and get the same enjoyment, you know, piecemeal in singles? I would kind of prefer to listen to it in singles because as we've briefly mentioned, there is a lot of sameness to it, I think. Uh, so over the course of the album, I totally agree with you what you said about the uh, Lucifer's Light kind of breaking that up a little bit, uh, if it were a little earlier. I think when I kind of like skip through the album, or if I just like put on one song, I'm like, damn, this song bumps. This is a good song. And there are a lot of really good songs on the album, but when you just kind of put them all together, they all just kind of blend into one another. And then I'm just kind of like, oh, this all just sounds the same now. So I personally think that like singles or, or you know, in, in smaller chunks, uh, it, it would benefit from that more, I think. And real quick, Nico, I'm going to ask you the same question. Do you agree okay. with Dan? I do. And particularly given that we are in, you know, you're 2021 and there is so much more of a visual aspect to music nowadays, I would say if this is your first exposure with the band, go check out their music videos first. They're so fun and really well designed. And they, as much personality as this album has, it really shows in the music videos as well well let's talk about it let's talk about I, I believe their lead music video from this record a night to dismember so i mean this one is how would you describe it dan is it's not stop motion it's they're like cutouts almost the band members yeah they're, they're almost like puppets almost like marionette kind of puppets uh-huh so the singer's mouth just kind of like kind of opens and closes like a um, like a sort of a nutcracker style mouth or like like I said like a marionette kind of kind of open and close the the bassist's hands or I can't remember if she's playing bass or guitar on the on the video but her hand just has like two or three spots of the guitar that just goes back yeah. and forth between and then the drummer was my favorite part of the video because the drummer is, has no head. And he's just like banging away on the drums. And then every once in a while, just like a spurt of blood just pops out of his, his neck. <laughs> yeah. And it was hilarious. And right. and I, I think it, that video to me like perfectly marries the the whimsical nature of some of their songs with mm -hmm. sort of the the metal and, and the horror kind of themes to it. Because a lot of their songs are almost whimsical. Right. Like Justin, you were saying with like the uh, the brain that wouldn't die, like – 
Yeah. You know, it's a fairly yeah. comical story um, presented in not necessarily a comical way, but it, it, it's comical, I guess. So the, in the, I think the video accurately portrays that. It's fun. Yeah. All right. All right. So now I'm going to have a little bit of fun with you guys myself here. So we traditionally do, you know, what would you do? And for this, I'm going to ask, what would you change? If you could, if there's one thing you could change on this record, what would it be? I'm going to lead with you, Nico. If you could change one thing about this record, what would it be? Right. So they, uh, as we've said before, this is an album that is very consistent and they they have their sound and they stick to it. They've got these fuzzy guitars, you know, really booming bass um, and everything sounds really good. The production is very good and the instruments are all distinct and just the tone that they have is it really suits them. But the, the one thing that I would change is I would add a couple of just like absolutely fucking ripping solos on top of some tracks. Like, I don't know which tracks, but I, w I would definitely add in some just fun guitar solos in there. I think that would be something that would fit their brand really well for one thing. So, you know, it's actually interesting, Nico. You're right. I do not remember too many solos on this album with the exception of there is a bass solo-ish kind of on Witchfinder General. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The bass gets a little time to shine and then the guitar jumps in. The bass is fucking money, by the way. Shout outs to that. It is. And I, I listened to this on two different things. You know, I listened to it on headphones as well as on, you know, like bigger speakers. And when I listened to it on my bigger speakers and I actually like turned it up, it was cool. Like I actually really, I really, really dug the mix in, in that, in that kind of style and setting. And we'll talk more about that in just a second. But Dan, what would you do differently? I, I hate to sort of tread on 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 this again but to me it would just be variety It'd change up some of the riffs a little bit or there was a couple times that there were different sounds or production that, like they would have like a choir um like a you know mm -hmm. keyboard playing choir uh, patch or or something that i think would like in we are the damned there's a cool sort of choir melody in the chorus they use that same keyboard patch in a few songs which is cool but I think it would be cool to have that as maybe like a guitar lead or something, just to have it be differentiated be from the other same keyboard sounds we've heard. And I think kind of along those same lines as the guitar solo thing, I only caught, I might be wrong, but I only caught one actual guitar lead part in the album. Um, and that was on The Ones Who Own the Dark. And it was very low in the mix and very quiet, which I'm I'm all for subtlety, but I think bringing that out would have helped add variety and a little bit of spice to to it. So I just think kind of adding different elements or changing around the production just a little bit to to add some sort of variety would would make this album r incredible to me. So and I now you and Nico have both kind of touched on it. I do want to get to this, but first, what would I do differently? I would maybe try and do something different vocally. I think my favorite tracks on this record are the one where the vocalist changes something up a little bit. And, you know, whether that's maybe, you know, some tracks could have used maybe slightly harsher vocals, maybe not even necessarily, you know, full blown like screaming if the vocalist doesn't want to do that, but something a little with a little more edge to it, maybe at times, or maybe just try a different technique or something. I don't know. But there was once or twice where I was like, all right, you know, like a lot of these vocal lines are kind of blending together a little bit for me. And that would be one thing I would change. But real quick, before we get to, you know, the next section, and I can't believe we haven't talked about this already, the mix. How did the mix sit for you, Dan? I loved it. I mean, the the guitars sound huge. Like you guys kind of talked about, the bass sounds really, really nice. A lot of the vocal production was great. Uh, there was a lot of like cool depth to the vocals. There's one or two songs, I can't remember which, but there's sort of like a vocal double in there that right. had sort of a, almost like retro almost like rockabilly kind of style. Like, obviously, this is a very different genre, but like that vocal production almost sounded a little rockabilly with that sort of like slap back delay kind of. Yeah, I mean, the the keys sounded really good. Again, like that that guitar lead, I would have liked to personally have brought up some, but overall, I, I thought the mix was awesome. All right. And Nico, I'm going to ask you a different question. This time, I guess, more towards the 
guitar. What did you think of the guitar tone? throughout this record. Yeah, so I, I thought the guitar tone was very good. It's definitely got a chunkier sound. It's It sounds like they might have may, maybe a fuzz pedal on there, like I said, um, but it, it doesn't sound digital at all. It sounds very much real. And I <laughs> that that's such a buzzword in music community saying like eh, things sound warm or they eh, sound like analog or something. It, it yes. sounds the the way that this guitar tone specifically sounds and I said this off mic, I think this guitar tone specifically and in addition to the, the album as a whole, it is as if you were playing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater in an old school hot topic. Just Picture that in your head and you will have the exact sound this record goes for and they fucking nail it. So that's interesting. That's, that's actually pretty interesting because the one thing that I, you know, also, because again, I, I guess was thinking about different things. So again, Anders, he's in a bunch of other projects. He does other things you know, one of which is a band slash group called Terratron. And I'm I'm shocked that we didn't hear more Terratron-esque influence on this record. And by that I mean he he does a lot of synthy things. And yeah, there was some synth on this, but for like for somebody with such a variety in genre that he that he covers. I was a little bit surprised to to see, you know, what we had on offer and not to belabor the point because Dan's already made it. Nico's already made it. But that is that is one thing that I would probably have to say sits as somewhat of a criticism for me, not a major one, because, again, this is this is what it is. And if you enjoy it, you'd be like, feed me more, Captain. So I won't belabor the point, but it is it is something that I'm interested in. And I wonder I wonder if maybe on future releases we, we would see more of um, more of that other influence bleeding in. But, you know, I think it's time to to really talk about how we feel here. So I couldn't find too many places where this album was reviewed and nothing like Rotten Tomatoes. So we're just going to give it our own scores here. So on a scale from zero to 100, where do you put this? And I'm going to lead off with Nico. So I would put this record at, and I'm going to sort of base my sort of rationale on Dan has, has said previous mm. times in episodes that like, you know, 50 isn't failing. 50 is like the middle of the road and like above that is good. And I'm just to frame this, I'm not giving it a 50. I'm actually going to be giving this a 69 because I think nice. this <laughs> album is actually pretty nice. It is really consistent through and through. They have a sound that they set out to establish. They succeed with flying colors. And even though this isn't really something that I personally would go back and put on repeat, there is a definite crowd for this. And they've done a really good job here. All right. Dan, what would you give this record? I'm going to give this one a 74. Woo! I thought it was a great, a fun record. A couple criticisms that we already talked about. And like Nico, I don't think it's going to be in my sort of regular rotation, but it's definitely songs that I'm going to be coming back to every once in a while listening to. It's a lot of fun. And it actually does make me really excited and interested to hear other music. I've listened to one or two Terra Drunk songs uh, that were awesome, but I want to check out some of their other music from previous albums that I haven't heard yet. So all in all, I thought it was a, a pretty great showing. I would like to give this one a 78 myself. I think that I loved it personally. The, the major criticisms aside that we've already mentioned at this point, they really, really, really nail a cool fusion of punk and metal. Just straight up. It's, it's really cool. And to echo the sentiments of Dan and Nico, no, I probably won't listen to this album on repeat, but I will certainly mix singles into playlists and particularly you know if we ever do anything that's horror themed for example if you know me and the guys do like a halloween thing or any kind of scary influence type thing th this is perfect and you guys remember uh for halloween when we were doing our um virtual 
thing, yeah. how we were kind of looking for songs. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's this whole album's eligible, really. I mean, it really is. And something I want to cool. say really quickly that we didn't talk about the What's that? art for this album, just the, the actual, you know, the, the, the album art is really fucking nice. It's got it's a drive in theater and there is a devil on a screen and it's it looks like a pulp novel. It's very stylized. We only really have this black and blood red with sort of like etchings on there. And by this is something that is rarely successful, I think. They got the aesthetics fucking perfect on their album art. The album art looks like it sounds. And I think that is really fucking rad. And it, it, it's cool, too, because kind of go along that, like, they definitely have their image and brand, which is very cohesive and oh, awesome. Yeah. Like, I mean, the music videos, like I kind of said, like, fit the music and it also fits the album art. And like everything about them is very cohesive, which is really, really great. I could see these guys touring with Ghost, like, you know, in the future when things are better. But, like, seriously, that would be a, a really good show. So I will say that was one thing that kind of sort of influenced my feeling is because listening to, especially when it comes to, like, punk music, listening to it is one thing and then experiencing it live is something completely different. For and sure. You can say, and you can say that about most genres, but particularly something as high energy as this. This, this is a show. Life. Yeah, this is a show I would love to go to. And I wouldn't give a shit about how similar the songs oh, are. Or aren't. Oh, no, not would, at all. Not at all. Like, th this shit would be a blast start to finish. So that's that's part of the reason why I, I voted the way I did. But let's go ahead now and, you know, we got to lay everything out on the table. Would you recommend this to a friend? I'll start with you, uh, Mr. 69. <laughs> nice That's what they call you right yeah yeah every time um i would recommend this to a friend it particularly because we, we we've talked about the genre here a couple of times the songs are really fucking short this album is only 32 minutes and that's very indicative of like old school punk records and stuff it's really easy to just pick up go through it and you know go about the rest of your day it's fun it's quick i i do recommend it okay dan Yes, I do. I would as well. Um, it's not going to get the golden seal of approval from me, which would, I mean, music different from movies, but it, this does not get the golden seal of approval from me. It's not something I would reach my upper echelon, but it's still damn fun. Dan, how about you? I echo that. Nico? Completely same here. I... I want to say that the closest thing we could, like an analog in our normal schema of, you know, reviews would be like a diamond in the rough. But this is a band that's been going for nine years. I don't know that I could call this something close to that. It's just, you know, it's lesser known, but it's still really good. And, you know, because of the various criticisms we've had, I, I can't give it the golden seal, but I would still recommend it. Wait, wait, you said nine years, Nico? Their first album is in 2012. Well, apparently they were founded in 2010, but <laughs> well, fuck me running, <laughs> but no, I mean, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. So it does quite, doesn't get the golden seal of approval, but still definitely something fun. And if you are, as we said earlier, if you're into punk metal and or horror, this could be right up your alley. And if you have any albums or anything else that you'd like for us to look at, drop us a line. We're on Twitter and Instagram at DOCD Horror. We're also on Facebook. Don't open that door. But till then, that's been it from, you know, your friends, Nico, Dan, and Jess. As always, keep rocking. And please, dear listener, don't open that door. Bye.